last forever. Israel said, His faithful love will last forever. Aaron's family said, His faithful love will last forever. New people worshiping the Lord say, His faithful love will last forever. I was in trouble, so I called to the Lord for help. The Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is with me, so I will not be afraid. No one on earth can do anything to harm me. And the Lord is my healer. I will see my enemies defeated. It is better to trust in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to trust in the Lord to trust in great leaders. The Lord is my strength and my reasoning for seeing me. He said, you hear the victory celebration in the homes of those who live right. The Lord has shown his great power again. The Lord's arms has raised in victory. The Lord has shown his great power again. The Lord made this happen, and we think it is wonderful. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Yeah. Heavenly Father, God, I ask you to say thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for God, working us up this morning. Yeah. Put it close my back. Give us the ability to breathe, to see, to hear, walk, and talk, oh Lord. And because you have just done all of that, oh Lord, at least we can do is, Lord, pray to you, oh Lord. Yeah. Yeah. the fire upon our bones, Lord. Yeah. We cannot be ashamed, we cannot be scared to pray to you, oh Lord. Yeah. Because you just have blessed us so many times, oh Lord. Yeah. You got died upon that cross for our sins, oh Lord. You got Christ again, oh Lord. So at least we have to say thank you. Yeah. 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 Just thank you, Lord, for all the things you have done and all the things you have got to do. Yes. Just thank you. And Jesus, my prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Rebecca Keys, we know that they are indeed related to the Parhams, the Morgans, and indeed the Roe family. And we pray for their strength in the Lord. And indeed, I never was able to see her in service. I was only able to see her in the hospital. But I got a sneaky suspicion that she had the same spirit that the rest of the family had. That she knew how to serve the Lord with gladness. Because he will indeed make a way where there is 
no way. Yeah. Trust them even when you can't do not trace them.
their children and went the extra miles in order for them to perform. And as I woke up this morning, I said I need to go the extra mile because they indeed have come to be a blessing and I want to be a blessing to them. So each of you will receive a McDonald's gift card from the Metropolitan Baptist Church. Amen. ministry, the mind class from the one of First Lady Jones's class at Spain Elementary. Let's give them a hand clap.
Amen. Let's give. TikTok right now, and indeed doing a whole bunch of other things, Amen. but they indeed Amen. decided to come out into the house of the Lord Amen. and give him some glory, Amen. give him some honor, and give him some praise. Amen. Let's give him one more. Amen. We would like you to know that immediately after the service, saints of God, we have prepared a light lunch and a meal for you to come down and fellowship with us in our fellowship hall right after the benediction. So I invite Lottie, Dottie, and everybody to indeed come and break bread with us, saints of God, because we are the blessed individuals today. And if my heart is overwhelmed whenever I see young people, not a change of the gospel. Lady Luana Jones has on your children's lives on a daily basis at the Spain Elementary School. Because the great African American leader and professional baseball player Jackie Roosevelt Robinson once said that a life is not important except in the impact that it makes on other lives. Amen. And we never know who these young ladies are going to be. They may indeed be the mayor of the city of Detroit one day. They indeed may be the president. We never know. But we have to indeed invest in them and let them know we are here to push them into everything that God has purposed and for their lives. It's good to see everybody. I just see my sister that snuck in here with her family. Saints of God. Well, you didn't invite me here to ramble. This is indeed my house. And this is indeed, as they said, the church of the open door and the place where God desires to give you the power to prevail. I ask that you open up your Bibles to John chapter 15 and verse number 7. God has a way of having his own way. And we're doing a series of sermons from the book of John. And I am supposed to be preaching from John chapter 7. But God made me work a little harder this week and said, I just want you to preach from one verse from John chapter 15 and verse number 7, saints of God. So if you hear me saying in my sermon next week about friends and family day, just charge it to my head and not my heart because God calls a shift to transpire in my spirit. But it says in John chapter 15 in verse number seven, it matters not what translation that you have as long as it says B-I-B-L-E, that is the book for me. I will be reading Tiffany Jackson from the New King James Version of the Scriptures Indeed, I recognize you from our Facebook page, and I ask saints of God that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, that you subscribe to our Facebook page, and that we can indeed get God's word out. It says in John chapter 15, in verse number 7, a very familiar passage of scripture, I'm almost embarrassed to preach it, but since it is indeed the word of God, we are assured of at least two things, Reverend Willis, that it's timeless in its truth. Yes. And it's ageless in its appeal. Amen. John chapter 15 and verse number 7 says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you can ask whatever it is in my name, and it shall be given. Amen. Putting the spiritual spotlight on the text again, it says, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. You will ask whatever you desire, and it shall be done. Amen. Amen. As you look at your neighbor and as you go to your seat, look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, 
You look pretty good today. You look pretty good today. But today, God wants you to know you need to stay on the line. Hang that up on the line of your mind and let the Holy Ghost blow on it. Stay on the line. My brothers and my sisters, I am sure at one time or another, in my pastorate here at the Metropolitan Baptist Church, you have personally heard me say that prayer is the necessary link between the divine hand that gives and the human heart that receives. Yeah. Because church, if you are going to undoubtedly live a kingdom life, a life that is pleasing and acceptable unto the God of our salvation, you must in fact stay attached to the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself, and subsequently stay in constant contact and communication with him at all times as well. Because as my Bible and your Bible says, I am here to let you know today on this Friends and Family Day that men ought to always pray and faint not. Church, did you hear what I said? I said that men ought to always pray and faint not. For I do believe that somebody in this sanctuary today can stand up and testify with me that life has never ever once indeed uprooted you, indeed allowed the enemy to pull you from where God wants you to be and taking you away from up on out of here. Because when you are attached to the God of your salvation, life doesn't stand a chance since you're grounded and rooted in the things of God. Thus far, saints of God. Because God's perfect will for your life is that God is sitting on the throne and he is indeed taking care of his own. In other words, Martin, all I'm trying to let you know today that God is in complete control and has custody of your life. Therefore, you shouldn't allow the adversary to go ahead and have his own way and improve your life. Because while the devil may have come to kill, to steal, and to destroy, God has come so that you can have life and have it all abundantly. It is all because you have been planted and grounded in the things of God and you have vowed to stick and stay with him no matter what comes your way because he is indeed, of course, the true vine over your life. Amen. Amen. And he is the one who has down through the years been totally responsible for giving you the power to prevail and the strength to go on anyhow and stand under an extremely hard and stressful situation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know if you know it or not, church, but God told me to tell you last night that prayer is powerful. Prayer is productive. Yeah. And prayer pays off in the lives of believers yeah. because the prayers of the righteous do avail it much. Yeah. For it is indeed through prayer that we gain the strength, the courage, and the spiritual stamina to overcome whatever obstacles that may be thrown our way out of anywhere to get us off of the path that God has purposed and ordained for our lives. Yeah. Because the adversary does not want to see you advancing in the things of God yeah. in any shape, form, or fashion. That's why he allowed the tires to fall off. That is why he allowed your children to get on that one nerve that you got left. Because the enemy wants you to throw in the towel. But if I be not a man of God, God brought me here to let you know today that your condition is not your conclusion. God has not given up on you. Therefore, you should never give up on yourself. And when life tries to overtake you, say to God, you don't have to go to Tennessee. You don't have to smoke no weed. I know that it was 420 this week, say to God, but God says you can erase all of that from your vocabulary. 
ordinary because you, you and me want to be victorious. You got to be able to look to the hills from which come of your help and know that all of your help comes from the Lord because the God we serve and the God we worship neither sleeps nor slumber. In a real sense, all I'm trying to let you know today, right along here is, if you know how to pray, yes. and if you know how to get a prayer through, uh -huh. you're going to undoubtedly be a force to be reckoned with. Yes, sir. And through your prayers, your prayers are going to put the enemy on the run. Uh -huh. For he knows himself that God Got his number. Come on. And God is not into playing any games when it comes to his particular children. Yeah. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 54 and verse number 17 that no weapon that is formed against you shall ever be able to prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. Because this is the inheritance of the servant of the Lord. Yes, yes. When one looks at the seventh verse of today's text with this spiritual notion in mind, now you can see why the New Testament evangelist John is so emphatic about recording the words of Jesus that he personally communicated to his disciples when he said in the seventh verse that if you abide in me, and my word abide in you. You can go ahead and ask for anything, and it shall be given and come to pass, especially for you. Come on. No matter how much pressure you may be under right now. Well. But Jesus is, of course, as he said in the first verse of today's text from John chapter 15 and verse number one. Jesus is the true vine. The one who fills us with his power and yeah. soaks us up with his strength from day by day. Uh -huh. In Metropolitan, that ought to let you know, as the sermon title of this message indicates, if God is in fact the true vine in your life, we need to subsequently stay on the line yeah. with him all day and all every day. day. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that he can lead us yeah. Guide us yeah. and show us the way into all spiritual truths. Yeah. Even when we got to spiritually face contrary winds uh -huh. and the heat is on. But look at somebody around you and tell them right here and right now that just knowing Jesus, yes. the God of your salvation, yes. and having a little talk with him throughout the day will surely make all of the difference in the world. For as my grandmama used to say, I say unto you today, church, that just having a little talk with Jesus will surely make everything all right. Is there anybody in here today that knows that just having a little talk with Jesus will surely make everything all right? But listen, listen, listen. Our very existence in life is definitely dependent on us exercising the spiritual discipline of prayer with all that is within us both day in and day out. For God is, of course, the very air that we breathe. And it is through Him that we live. It is through Him that we move. And it is through Him that we have our being. And God is the one that personally ushers us into our place of victory in him, when we abide in him, when we fellowship with him, and boldly come to him without any fear or reservations in prayer. Yeah. In yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. For the Greek word for ask in the Greek literally means you will demand for some things to be done and go down on your behalf. Yeah. But you know for yourself that God wants you to, of course, come boldly to the throne of grace and ask for help during your time of trouble. 
For as I saw on a Facebook post the other day that my friend and brother, Pastor Claude May, of the Oasis of a Hope Christian Church on Seven Mile in Woodward made a post. He said that you got to understand, my friends and family, that number one, God hears prayer. Yes. Let the church say, God hears prayer. God, God hears, hears prayer. prayer. Number two, God heeds prayer. Let the church say, God heeds prayer. God heeds prayer. Number three, God answers prayer. God answers prayer. And number four, God delivers by prayer. God delivers by prayer. But the good news is, trusting watch, as the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 65 and verse number 24, even before we call on God's holy name, because he knows our name comes, God will answer, and even as we speak, he will hear us and help us without any hesitation. But God is surely sitting on the throne, and he is taking care of his own saints of God. Oh, help me, Holy Spirit. I'm trying to help somebody in this sanctuary today overcome the obstacles that you've been encountering and going through in your faith walk with God each and every day. Because God told me to tell you last night in preparation for this message the other day that if you want the promises of God to come to pass in your life and in the life of your family, you got to stop being passive. you got to stop being inactive. And you got to stop being lifeless in your prayer life. Because God wants to do something supernatural and special in your life right here and right now. Because the God we serve and the God we worship can do things in and through our lives which are exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And all I try to let you know today, friends and family, that if you got the faith, God surely got the power to blow your mind and take you from the point of breaking down to the place of breakthrough when you get down on your knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No one I help I know that thou will draw your strength from me. Where should I go? Because whenever you do all of that by faith, before you know it, the problem will be solved. Before you know it, the situation will be settled. And before you know it, that healing will happen. Because he was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace is upon him and through his stripes. We are here. Yes, you gotta stop being passive. You gotta stop being inactive. Yes. And you gotta stop being lifeless in your prayer life. Yes. Because God wants to do something major. <laughs> but church, let me slow it down right around here. I hate to tell you, it's never going to come about. Nor should I say go down with you sitting down. All right. Like you are a bump on the wall. Because you should be proactively uh -huh. leaning on the Lord yes. and putting your faith into Him yes. at all times. For God is a rewarder to those that diligently seek Him. That's why as your pastor, as your friend, and as your brother, every morning, noon, and night, I ask, or should I say, I humbly demand my faith that God heals you, yeah. that God delivers you, yeah. and that God sets you free. Yeah. Because if you want the Lord to help, yeah. and you show sure enough all the want the Lord to help, yeah. all you got to do early in the morning yeah. and late in the midnight hour yeah. is indeed call upon the name yeah. of the Lord and bow down and ask God to come and see about you. Because at this text, teaches us in the seventh verse of today's text. When you seek the Lord, when you speak to the Lord, and when you finally stick 
with the Lord no matter what the situation and stressful situation is in your life. God will show you greater things than you ever knew because God is our refuge and our strength and a very present help in the time of trouble. Oh, somebody in here ought to indeed invite the presence of God in this house and help me preach this morning by saying that there's something about saying the name Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And if when you call on the name of Jesus, 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 something truly happens. Am I right about it, church? Because God has a name that is above every name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He was singing earlier, saints of God, that God knows our name. But the question that I want to present to you right here and right now is do you know the name of Jesus, because if you know the name of Jesus with sickness in your body, all you gotta do is bow down when that child is getting on that one nerve that you got left. And Mrs. Jones gives you a D or an F on that report card. You need to get down on your knees and say to God, when you get a pink slip on your job, God does not want you to fall under pressure. No, the rain may come and the winds may blow, but you got to get down on your knees and say, God, I need you now more than ever. Surely it happens when you call on this name. Yes. Oh, I feel like preaching yeah. and drawing closer and closer to him now yeah. through the power of prayer. Because this text is so tell it to teach us, Sister Ellis, all oh, that we gotta stay logged in yes, and join in with ever what and whatever God wants to do. In and through our lives. Yeah. We're out declaring to you today, Metropolitan, that if we just follow God's teaching, yeah. if we just heed His Word and allow His Word to saturate in our spirit, heaven will subsequently open up on our behalf and God will undoubtedly bless us beyond belief yeah. with every move we take and with every step we take in Him. For the connection is maintained through our trust and obedience in Him. That's why my initial preaching point to you this afternoon is centered around the spiritual truth and reality. That when you know that Jesus is on the main line, yeah. number one, you better not hang up on him. Let the church say, you better not. Hang up on him in any shape, form, or fashion. No matter how difficult the dilemma and the situation you may be going through is right now. But trust me when I tell you, church, whenever you abruptly end a spiritual conversation with God by cutting the connection off and by hanging up on him, guess what? You are just setting yourself up for failure and self-destruction. Yeah. Because the Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction, chaos, and confusion. But church, whenever you hang up the phone, stop praying and leave God out of the equation, and you go out there and do your own thing, you are realistically placing yourself right into the hand of the enemy. For as I told you earlier, the adversary does not want to see you advancing and abiding in the things of God by any means. But he knows that if you seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, everything else will be added unto you. But he knows that when you ask, it shall be given. When you seek, you shall find. And when you knock, the door will be open. 
Therefore, give someone around you an air five and tell them, God says, wait on the Lord and remain on the line. All right. For he is surely thinking about you and wants the best for you in the here and now. Because the good news is that God knows the thoughts and the plans that he has towards you are good and not evil. But didn't you hear him say in a roundabout way in this text that if you ask for him for anything along the lines of who he is and with specifically what he is doing in and through your life, he will surely do it right then and there for your benefit with the quickness and for his glory, since you're undoubtedly finally united to him and have vowed that you're going to indeed follow him, even though you're going through tough and trying times. For God's got everything that you need, saints of God. You got to be the one who knows that if you just delight yourself in him, God will give you the desires of your heart. As a matter of fact, I feel an old school preaching vibe in this house right about now. Therefore, somebody in here ought to help me preach this afternoon by screaming, it's time to pick up the phone, my friends, because Jesus is on the main line, and we have been given the full rights and privileges as his children to call him up and tell him what we want. But yes, he wants to hear from us, saints of God, when the bottle falls out and the wheels come off of our tires. Am I right about it, church? and say yes and say thank you Jesus because my second point to you is simply this as a child of God you should stay on the line and have a little talk with Jesus because God wants you secondly to keep on holding on to his holy word after you stay connected to him and don't hang up on him yeah because God is about to further release a relevant and a ring of word in the midst of your situation that's going to give you the inspiration, the information, and the insight you need to go on anyhow in the midst of your adversity and see what the end is going to be. Because the Bible says in Psalm 34 and verse number 19 that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord is able to deliver us from them. No wonder in the 119th division of the Psalms, the psalmist boldly said, Your word have I hidden in my heart so that I might not sin against thee. Praise be to you, O God. Teach me your decrees with my lips. I recount all the laws that come from your mouth. And I rejoice in following your statutes as one rejoices in great riches. Yes. Church, the Old Testament writer of wisdom literature said all of that and a little bit more. Because he spiritually understood that you got to stay on the line yeah. with the divine. Yeah. And let him have his own way in and through your life. Yeah. For his word will be a lamp unto your feet and a light into your path. Yeah. For God's word will challenge you, God's word will confront you, and God's word will change you. Yeah. Thank God Almighty, we serve an awesome and an amazing God, church, who wants us to just holler at him when all H-E-L-L breaks loose in our lives and holler at him even when things are surely going good for us. Amen. For he surely knows how to spiritually set things off and set us up for a miracle, a healing, and a breakthrough suddenly. Hallelujah. Because he wants us to go higher and higher in the things of God. Yeah. That's why we got to stay committed to holding on to God's unchanging hand and remaining with him through it all. Because the word abides in all actuality means to stay where you are and personally and spiritually watch God work and release a word, a blessing, and a promise when we go predicting that. For God says, even in the day of your trouble. Psalm 50, 15 says, in the day of your trouble, call on me 
and I will answer thee, and you shall glorify me if you just call on me because I specialize in causing turnarounds and breakthroughs to come through in your life when I yank you out with your mighty hand and you learn how to get your praise on. I guess that's why David said in Psalm 34 that I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my lips. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together because this poor man cried out to the Lord and the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his fears because is there anybody in here today who wants to join me in saying that the Lord is my life and my salvation? Who should I fear? Yes, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? For when my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they so stumble and fail. Because one thing and one thing only do I desire of the Lord, and that is what I will seek after both day and night, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, I do now, church. Therefore, let me go ahead and close this message out so that we can go downstairs. Because God would have you to know, last but not least, that you got to go ahead and stay on the line when you got a hookup with the eternal one and with heaven and align your prayers up with the will of God and the word of God when God allows you into the presence of God because my Bible says that in his presence is the fullness of joy and at thy right hand there are pleasure forevermore. Yeah. Because when you got a hookup with the Holy One, it's easy to understand that faith honors God, and God honors faith. But didn't you hear God say in the concluding clause of verse number seven, that if you just remain in him, yeah. and his voice remains in you, yeah. victory shall be around the corner, and it's surely on the way, because whatever you open your mouth up for, it will be brought to pass in your life. For it is said that prayer certainly comes spontaneously from those who abide and remain in Jesus, and who know without question and without doubt that God is more than able to do just what he said he would do through prayer. That's why saints of God, God brought me in here today just to let somebody in this sanctuary today know that you got to hold on and hold out to the unchanging hand of God because life may be filled with swift transitions, but if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and neither has it entered into the hearts of men the things that God has in store for you. Therefore, you don't have to wait until the battle is over. So God wants to show up and show himself strong in the midst of your situation. And say to God, if you get root for the bride change, if you get root for John Moran, if you get root for the University of Michigan, if you get root for Michigan State, you ought to stand on your feet and give God the glory, give God the honor, and give God the praise to somebody in here so that when you ask God for anything, God will step on you the day and show up and show himself strong in the midst of your situation. Well, baby, you don't know about the power of prayer, but I stop by here to let you know that when I get down on my knees, God will show up and show himself strong in the midst of my spirit. So now I want you to know, don't give up on God. Amen. Because he won't give up on you. Yes. Because he's able. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not holding this microphone in my hand because I've been so good. Come on. But I'm holding this microphone in my hand because of the grace and the mercy of God. 
Because he looked beyond my faults. And he saw my needs. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be teaching from Ephesians chapter 5 this week. And Ephesians deal with your walk. And God wants you to know that you can't just talk about it. All right. All right. You must also be about it. Because if you knew some of the stuff that I done did down through the years, guess what? I may not want you, my y'all may not want to hear me preach. But guess what? If I knew some of the stuff that y'all did, I may not want to preach to you as well. But the common denominator of it all is the grace and the mercy of God. As we all rest on our feet, the doors of the church are open. If you're here today, and you do not have a personal relationship with the God of your salvation. God says you do not need to just stay on the line. You need to get on the line. And give God your life. Give God your heart. Because there is no failure in Him.
just look for the Metropolitan Baptist Church, the church that you entered into today at 13110 14th Street. And you can give through the mail. And we're going to soon have cash out. Right. We invite you back to the house of God every week, saints of God. And if you can't make it in person, indeed, watch us on our YouTube channel Come on. or our Facebook live page. And watch God move mightily in your life. The ushers are going to come and we're going to prepare to go downstairs for the wonderful meal that has been presented for us. Good to see you, cuz. Indeed, if my drummer wasn't here, I would have just called you up and indeed asked you to come on those drums. The ushers are coming now and we will indeed be dismissed. Spain Elementary, please see your teacher, the Wanda Jones, to receive your gift card, Saints of God. I know it's a McDonald's over there on I-75 and Mac, Saints of God. So indeed, I just want to be a blessing to you and you have been a blessing to us. Yay! Let's not forget for those at the Metropolitan Baptist Church and even for our visitors, we have a wonderful women's uh, seminar on May the 6th. You can indeed sign up on the door of our administrative office. You can indeed just call the church or you can indeed, saints of God, go through event right, saints of God, or just show up. And indeed, we will make room and space for you as God educates us and gives us the inspiration, the information, and the insight that we need to have a new input for him. Saints of God, 
Let's not forget immediately after the benediction, there is a meal prepared for you downstairs. And I'm going to indeed go and change my shirt. My son is going to pray down there to bless the food, saints of God. And I will be downstairs to meet each and every one of you, saints of God, that you have truly been a blessing to the Metropolitan Baptist Church. And our church is a door, church of the open door. And we invite you back at any time. May we all stand.